Hello everyone, and welcome to yet another corner in my apartment. So far on this channel I've talked about books and I've talked about movies, but funnily enough I think the biggest thing in my life right now is music, and today we're here to talk about some albums. I have a modest but lively CD collection. Um, most of them I've gotten secondhand from places like a Newbury Comics. Um, some of them are gifts, some of them I actually bought full price when they came out, and I'm just gonna talk to you about them today. We're just gonna go through all of them alphabetically. So up first we have Sprained Angle by Julian Baker. This is a singer-songwriter indie folk album from 2015. It's maybe my favorite, favorite album of all time. Julian expresses something very raw and personal and emotional about mental illness and about being a human being, and it just sounds good. Her voice is so good on this. If you've listened to Boy Genius, the recent EP with Julian Baker, Phoebe Bridges, and Lucy Dacus, I think this is my favorite single output from any of those artists, so please give it a listen. Up next I have the three main releases by twee pop indie pop group Belle and Sebastian. I have The Boy with the Arab Strap, I have If You're Feeling Sinister, and I have Tiger Milk. Not all of their songs are about being gay and in boarding school, but for some reason they're like the gay and in boarding school group to me. Um, they're wonderful for just kind of like teenage malaise without like that teenage malaise vibe you sometimes get from music. Up next we have Radio City by Big Star. I think this is actually my third favorite Big Star album, but this is the only one I own. I believe I got this in Ireland, which is just a fun little thing to have from that trip. This does have September Girls on it, which is maybe the best Big Star song, so can't really complain. Most of the CDs I own are of albums that I genuinely love. Like I find them for like $5.99 at Newbury Comics and I buy them, but every so often I find an album that I like enough that is cheap enough that I get it. And that's Silent Alarm by Block Party. I believe the technical genre for this band is post-punk revival. Half the songs in this album are just like punchy and amazing with like this incredible vibe and the other half tried to be that way as well but like just completely missed the mark. But This Modern Love is uh, both a song that like makes you want to drive like 90 miles an hour on the highway and also lyrically is just so brilliant in how it actually captures modern love. Weird album, some great songs. Up next we have Moon Picks by Cat Power. This is one of the saddest albums of all time. It is this slowcore singer-songwriter album that uh, just really hurts. I didn't intend for this whole video to be recommendations, but this is my recommendation if you're ha for having a night where you're just crying and don't want to get out of it and you just kind of want to sit in the soup of your own self-hatred. This is for you. Up next we have a dream pop classic, Heaven or Las Vegas by Cocktail Twins. I actually recently finished re-listening to every Cocteau Twins release I've ever heard, and this is my favorite, hands down. Love's Easy Tears, the EP, is like kind of a close second, but this blows everything out of the water. We've got my two favorite Leonard Cohen albums. I think this one is the better album overall. Suzanne is his best song, I think, by a while, wide margin. <laughs> But I kind of see this as something more autumnal and when winter happens I reach for this because I think like famous blue raincoat and avalanche those really feel like being trapped in a snowstorm, perhaps even trapped in an avalanche. Anyways, then I own um, I'm it's Wide Awake, I'm, with, I'm Wide Awake It's Morning by Bright Eyes. Bright Eyes is a band that kind of goes in and out of my life, they're an indie folk group artist. Um, Lifted is really the only album of theirs that I really listen to consistently anymore, but this has a special place in my heart and so I own it. We have Transatlanticism by Death Cab for Cutie. Um, the title track to this used to be, for many years, the only way I could fall asleep. I'd listen to it two times on repeat and I'd fall asleep somewhere um, in the middle of the second listen. This album has a very special place in my heart for many reasons, and I'm glad I own it. Then I have the three main releases by Nick Drake. I have Brighter Later, I have Five, Sleeve, Five Leaves Left, and I have Pink Moon. I think he is an incredible autumn into winter artist. He is like a contemporary folk artist. His voice is just so gorgeous. Um, Northern Sky off of this album, which I think is my least favorite album. I think we go one, two, three. But my favorite song of his is Northern Sky, that song I could listen to any day of the year, any time of year, and it will fill me with just this, like, unbelievable bliss. Up next we have my two favorite Bob Dylan albums, Free Will and Bob Dylan and Blonde on Blonde. At this point, I think Blonde on Blonde kind of edges it out, but they're both so good for such different reasons. Like if I want that very chill, laid back, Bob Dylan-y vibe, I'll go to this and just like listen to Girl from the North Country over and over again. But I think at this point my favorite Dylan song of all time is um, Stuck Inside a Mobile with the Memphis Blues again, and like just the compositions on this are so smart and sweeping at times, and he's 
He's amazing, you know who Bob Dylan is, I don't have to hype him up. A fun fact about me is that Duke Ellington is my favorite jazz artist of all time, and I don't have my favorite album of his, but I do have Duke Ellington and John Coltrane, which I feel like is a very cool thing to own. I don't often actually play my CDs, I have a CD player, but I don't often play them, but one thing I will sometimes put on is a jazz album, because it's nice to have one in the background, and like, my laptop's shut, it's just me and the CD player, and this is really good for that. Um, the first track, In a, Sentim in a Sentimental Mood, is just like one of my favorite single jazz tracks of all time, so... Very glad I have this. Up next, we have Something to Write Home About by The Get Up Kids. I believe my boyfriend got this for me. I think this is one of the only ones that isn't like a completely secondhand CD. Um, this is an emo album. I don't listen to it a ton anymore, but I think this is, again, kind of another good one for driving, I feel like. It's just got that energy that you want from like a good emo album, um, but it's not as like whiny as I feel like emo sometimes get a, gets a reputation for. Every so often, I buy an album before I like the album because I anticipate liking it in the future, and that is what happened with To Bring You My Love by PJ Harvey. When I listened to this for the first time, I did not enjoy it, and then I saw it, it was cheap, and I was like, I feel like at some point in my life I'm going to like this album, so I bought it, and lo and behold, I like this album now. PJ Harvey is a badass singer-songwriter, blues rock, uh, just queen, amazing, great album. Then we have Turn On The Bright Lights by Interpol, which is an album with incredible songs, but I never really reach for them when it comes- it's not- they're not an artist that when they come on on shuffle I like need to listen to. I have to be in a very specific, somber, nocturnal yet urban mood. This is a classic though, I, I can't deny it, it's just like incredible music. This isn't the full album, but I have part one of the Magnetic Fields' 69 love songs. This is, if you've never heard of it, exactly what it says on the tin. The full album is 69 love songs, um, they're like an indie pop group. Stephen Merritt has one of the best voices in all of music, and um, it's weird to call that one of my al favorite albums because there's so much filler, but what I do love on that album is like some of my favorite music of all time, so love that I get to own even a little piece of it. Next we have Mazzy Stars, so tonight that I might see. Didn't know the full name of this until I looked at it. Fade Into You is, uh, I think, up there on like my top 20 favorite songs of all time. Just like this beautiful dream pop, hazy masterpiece of love. And this is the album that it's on. Next we've got post-rock group Mogwai with Come On Die Young, with this little handsome fella uh, on your screen. My favorite Mogwai release is their EP, just four tracks that are post-rock perfection, but this album has a lot of gems, and again, as I feel like something I'm probably gonna turn to a lot this winter, because it's like, the lights are out, and you, you don't necessarily have to be sad, but you at least need to be somber. Next we have the king himself, John Darnielle, aka the Mountain Goats. I have All Hell West Texas and Tallahassee. You might be wondering, Nicole, why do you even own CDs if you don't really play them that often? And from the answer for most of these is that I just like owning them, I like being able to look at them, I like having a CD collection, whatever, whatever. But when it comes to the Mountain Goats, I actually love owning the physical copies. John Darniel, the lyricist and frontman, writes, oh my god, everything is falling around me. He writes these, like, inside booklets, and I think for both of these, and it is some of the most beautiful writing of all time. It's, like, clear that John isn't just a musician or even just a writer, that he's, like, a poet and a feeler, and, like, I just love getting to read his supplemental words with both of these albums. So if you are a Mountain Goats fan, I strongly suggest getting, like, a physical copy of the CD sometime and getting to read the inside. Next we've got my two favorite national albums, Alligator and Boxer. I think Alligator is a better album as a whole, but Boxer has some of my favorite national songs. Funnily enough, my favorite national song, Blood Buzz Ohio, is on neither of these, but Slow Show, my second favorite, is on Boxer, but Alligator is more consistent. This is my national review. I own one CD, for which I have never heard the full album, and that is Nirvana's MTV Unplugged. I love their version of Where Did You Sleep Last Night, I think that is my favorite Nirvana thing I've ever heard, but I've not actually heard the full album. I bought it because, again, I knew that one day I would like it, and I still suspect that I'm going to love this full album, um, but I have not actually heard it yet, so I'm a poser and I own this, but I haven't heard it, I'm so sorry. And then we have the first CD I ever actually bought myself, Riot by Paramore, accompanied by the first album I begged my parents to buy me, Brand New Eyes, and then we have After Laughter. Paramore is really the first band that got me into, like, music. Like, I was listening to all the Disney Channel stuff for a lot of years, and then I was listening to a lot of YouTube musicians, and then I discovered Paramore in the 
5th grade, and that's what started my love of music, so I'm very glad that I get to own these physical copies. In the home stretch, I have three little piles and we're on pile three. I have Purple Rain by Prince and the Revolution. Prince is cooler than any of us could ever dream of being. The title track here is one of my favorite songs of all time, and that is all I have to say about Purple Rain. Up next we have Different Class by Brit pop group Pulp. Um, this is an album that like I don't think about the whole album a ton, um, but there are a few songs on here, specifically like Common People, Disco 2000, Is Babies on here? Babies is not on here, but those two songs um, I really love, and especially Disco 2000 I reach for um, a lot. Good album. Up next we have a couple Radiohead albums, and again, you need to remember that I don't really go out of my way to buy albums. When I'm at a store, I see what is in front of me, what's on sale, what's cheap, and so I own Amnesiac and Hail to the Thief. Granted, I think Amnesiac is my favorite Radiohead album, and Hail to the Thief, although I think it sometimes gets shat on, is not a bad album. There's some incredible songs on here, and if you have not given Hail to the Thief its shot, you need to. Yeah, like, I'm just looking at the back of this, like, 2 plus 2 equals 5, sit down, stand up, go to sleep. Uh, it's a good album. They're there. Okay, whatever. Though I think Amnesiac is my favorite Radiohead album, and uh, Pyramid Song is my favorite Radiohead song. Then we have O by Damien Rice. He is an Ir Irish folk singer. Um, this, I feel like I consider this album a guilty pleasure because it is just like some Irish folk music, but there are certain songs on here, um, especially Delicate and I Remember, that are just like so near and dear to my heart. I went through a very strong phase with I Remember, because there's like this climax in the middle of the song that just like absolutely blows my mind, so I'm a fan. I'm sitting here on the floor next to my artwork for Sigurosa's parentheses, which is fitting. Oh my god, can I place it down? Can she place it down? She did it. I'm sitting next to my two Sigurosa albums, parentheses, and I'm, I'm not gonna try to pronounce this. I will put it up on the screen and you will understand why. Sigurosa is my favorite post-rock group. Um, I think they're Icelandic arctic vibes are amazing and just their song compositions are beautiful. Um, this album is February. When February happens, listen to this album and you'll understand why. It's just like that perfect, cold, icy, amazing atmosphere, music, great, amazing, never been done before, incredible, we're gonna stop while we're ahead. Next we have Shoegaze Classic, Suvlaki by Slow Dive. I think I also bought this before I was really even that into the album. I knew Allison, which is like maybe the best Shoegaze song of all time. I know that's like the standard, but it really might be the best one. Um, but this album has grown on me a lot. Funnily enough, my favorite Slow Dive release is their self-titled EP. I feel like that's happened a lot of times where I own an album, but an EP is actually better. But like, you can't deny this album. This is just like a shoegaze classic, incredible. Up next we have Laser Guided Melodies by Spiritualized, and a few funny things about this. First off, I think that Ladies and Gentlemen We Are Floating in Space is the better album, and it's one of my favorite albums of all time. Let's just get that out of the way. But the fun thing about this album is this is actually owned by one of my boyfriend's high school friends um because we went to a Newbury Comics where this guy worked at and I saw it it was like three dollars and I went to buy it from this guy and he was like oh yo that was mine and I like donated it to the store and so I own Jerry's copy of this thank you Jerry for giving it to the Newbury Comics and letting me purchase it from you basically as any sad girl must have I have two Sufjan Stevens albums uh Carrie and Lowell which is my favorite album of his and Illinois I think I like Seven Swans more than Illinois as well but both of these are just classics this is soft sad and beautiful and this is out there and zany and instrumental not just instrumental it has a lot of instruments um chamber pop if you will um big fan of both of these. Unpopular opinion time. Next I have The Velvet Underground by The Velvet Underground, which is the best Velvet Underground album. Like, Pale Blue Eyes, After Hours, Candy Says, What Goes On. It's just, it's so good. It's so, the vibe of this, I don't know, I, I don't know how much album art affects your experience of an album, but I look at this and I listen to the album and I feel like I'm there on that couch in this like dimly lit room with them, if that makes any sense at all. Granted, I don't necessarily experience banana when I listen to The Velvet Underground and Nico, but you understand at least a little bit what I'm saying. We have the two best Tom Waits albums, Bone Machine and Rain Dogs. Um, I am a Rain Dogs person through and through. I think this is kind of what it feels like to walk through New York City at night, but Bone Machine is what if some of that, but it's all a little bit scarier. Dirt in the Ground is my favorite on this album, and ooh, I think it's probably Downtown Train on Rain Dogs. That might be like the standard opinion, but it is, in my eyes, 
my opinion. Not the correct opinion. There's no correct opinions. What are we talking about here? This video is pure chaos because I realized that I have so many albums to talk through and if you're still watching, thank you. Welcome to my little world. Welcome to my weird little corner of my brain where we just talk about things with no script. Never scripted a video, probably never will because I would not be able to follow it because there's so much going through my head. Moving on, we have And Then Nothing Turned Itself Inside Out by Yola Tango. This is my second favorite Yola Tango album. My favorite is Painful, but alas, I do not own that but this one is, I think it's really long if I can recall correctly, but it is a nice listening experience all the way through. I believe I've listened to this on a train before and it's kind of nice, like, sun setting, it's getting dark, it's dusk. Again, the album cover. Maybe album covers do so much to us psychologically. Whatever. Great dusk album, great band. We have two more albums left and we're gonna get through this. Yankee Hotel Foxtrot by Wilco, um, an indie rock classic, has some of my favorite songs of all time on it. I'm Trying to Break Your Heart, Jesus, etc. Pot Kettle Black, Reservations. Are you kidding me? It's amazing. And finally, we have Rust Never Sleeps by Neil Young and Crazy Horse. This is an album that, again, I feel like I've only heard once or twice. It's a live album. And although I've only heard it a couple times, there are a few tracks on here that are like all timers. We've got Thrasher, we've got Hey Hey My My Into the Black. Just beautiful, beautiful music. Those are my CDs. I'm so sorry if this video has been 30 minutes long. I'm sorry if you could hear cars, cars driving by and I'm sorry for my, cha my chaotic, I can't speak. Just wow but yeah if you want more music content from me just let me know um at this point i feel like my channel is somewhere just in like the con category of media i will talk about books and movies and music to my heart's content and to your content so let me know what you would like to see from me whether it is music related or not and i hope you enjoyed this video um and i will see you guys next time